Hi guys, Brian from Brian Boas here. One of the main incentives for breeding boas and something that I really look forward to are the holdbacks. So these are your favorite animals from the litters you produce that you're going to keep and grow up and they're going to be the future breeders to shape your breeding projects in exactly the direction that you so desire. And I've been really lucky the last couple of years had some really nice litters and I've been able to hold back some really choice animals. Just want to share some of those with you today so that you can see some of the future breeders and you can see some of how these uh, sub-adult boas are developing. Many of you guys out there have the siblings to these animals so be sure to stay tuned if you want to see some of the relatives of your boas or you just want to look at beautiful boa eye candy. To start with, I got to show you one of my favorite Suriname red tails from the last few years. And as you probably know, Surinams are probably my bread and butter. I produce more of Surinams than any other boa. I produce multiple litters every year these days. Got multiple pairings going on right now. Just wanted to show you this guy. This is a beautiful Prometheus bloodline animal produced in 2021. Unfortunately, he's in shed right now. So his colors are kind of dulled a little bit, but hopefully you can still see how beautiful he is. I call this guy Pink Floyd, and I know Pink Floyd is a pretty common name for boas and some other animals. So if you have a Pink Floyd, you know, I didn't rip it off you. I'm just a fan of Pink Floyd. You've all seen my animal, Mr. Pink. I show him a lot. Uh, but Pink Floyd also has a lot of pinks. And I have a number of really nice pink boas that I'm growing up for a future breeding project. This guy was just a definite standout from a litter back in 2021. His colors were just so much pinker and so much lighter and more vibrant than the rest of the litter. He's also got this beautiful peaked pattern, long red tail. I like his personality also. He's really kind of chill. Maybe not quite as chill as Mr. Pink, but definitely chill for a true red tail. This guy's doing really well, uh, you know, putting on the size. Hopefully he'll be ready to go in an, another few years and contribute his beautiful pink jeans to the next generation of Suriname red tails here at Brian Boas. Next we have another Suriname, another 2021 baby. You can see this one, she's not quite as big as the guy I just showed you from a different bloodline. And the reason I held back this female is she just has what I call the Futo look. Um, she has the look of many boas from the Fudo bloodline. They have basically these nice symmetrical peak saddles. You know, not too peaked, but just peaked enough. Uh, they have this clean overall appearance and just a nice looking boa, nice red tail. Uh, so this female is probably about 50% Fudo. She's got Fudo contributions from both sides. Also some of my other really nice bloodlines in there. She's a little bit squeezy. Um, you know, some Surinams are just more squeezy than others, so she doesn't really like being on camera apparently, but just a really nice solid boa uh, from 2021 that has what I deem the Futo appearance to her. And I think she's also going into shed, unfortunately, but uh, maybe I'll get my camera out and get some nice pictures once she sheds and has the more beautiful looking colors in her skin. Next, also from 2021, we have this beautiful Beset Bloodline Longicata or Long Tail Boa. And this guy's really developing nicely. These animals are born much lighter and they develop more and more of this dark pigment with every shed. And this guy is definitely looking quite a bit different than he looked when he was born. But just a really great type of boa to work with. Not too difficult as far as the husbandry. Very laid back and handleable and beautiful to look at. There's a dedicated cult of specialists that only keep the Longicata boas. And I recommend them for any boa keeper from an absolute beginner to a seasoned veteran. And this guy is just looking really nice. Um, in fact, I have the same pairing going on right now that produced this guy. Again, I, as I mentioned, he's from the Bisset bloodline. I also have some babies still available from my 2022 litter which is from uh, Vin Russo's bloodline, which are also beautiful to look at. So Longicata is a great species to work with, and hopefully I'll have some more full siblings to this guy in another uh, few months, sometime over the summer. Some of you guys who have his siblings, hopefully you can see the family resemblance to your boa. 
Next we have a really nice red tail born here in 2020. And this is a Pocalpa Peruvian. This is my male holdback from that litter. He's looking real nice starting to develop his adult looks. He's definitely getting more of that flattened square body shape and also developing more of this nice beautiful golden color. These Peruvians in general go faster than the Surinams. And this guy, I would say, he's probably gonna be about uh, six or seven feet when he reaches full size. So he's got a few more years to go until he's ready to breed. But just beautiful looking animal. I have some pairings going on right now with Peruvians. I'm a little reluctant to count my boas before they're born though, because it's, unfortunately Peruvians, I've had more difficulty breeding than the Surinams. And last year I only produced one small litter, unfortunately. But hopefully the boa breeding gods will be on my side this year and will have better results as far as the Peruvians, because I know how impressive they are and how many of you guys want them. But just, you know, beautiful, beautiful animal. You know, great species to work with if you're looking for the epitome of the true red tail boa. Thought I'd grab another 2020 red tail. This guy is a Suriname. And compared to the Peruvian we just saw, you can see he's quite a bit smaller. And that's normal. The Surinams just don't grow as fast. This guy was also a little small to begin with. And he's grown a little bit slower. But he's kind of reaching his stride. He's put on some good size over the last year. But just a really beautiful animal from what I call my Picasso bloodline. Got this light, clean coloration and these peak saddles. You can see he's a little bit uptight, as you know some Surinams are. Uh, and maybe he's just in kind of uh, not the best mood to be in front of the camera. But uh, he's doing real well. And this guy, you know, has a few more years to go before he's breeding size. But uh, just what I'm looking for from this bloodline, these beautiful peak saddles and this nice red tail and this nice, nice almost pastel coloration with some purples and some pinks. Just a really beautiful example of a true red tail boa from Suriname. 2021 was a really good year for me as far as boa litters. And here's another example of a 2021 born animal. This is a Honduran fire belly boa. And I'm really proud of this male. He's just uh, that orange and pink just really glows. And this guy, as you can see, he's largely patternless, just a few saddles there. But his belly is really starting to take on that look of the fire belly. And you can see these are, they're Honduran boas. They've got these really short stumpy heads, short snouts, and these really big, beautiful, uh, kind of orangey red brown eyes. Just a really, really distinctive looking boa. So the Honduran Fire Belly Project um, was started uh, by uh, Dennis Sargent and Tom Crutchfeld back in, I believe, the late 90s. And uh, unfortunately, the project was abandoned by Dennis Sargent and he sold off the boas. There's really not that many of them around. In fact, I don't really know of anybody working with them right now other than myself. So I'm really trying to preserve these boas in captivity for future generations. We all heard about like heritage breed livestock, heritage breed chickens and rare breeds. And the same thing applies to boas. You know, we really need to preserve these animals just so we have this incredible diversity of different animals in captivity that goes for both the locality specific breeds and the morph breeds as well. But this guy's doing really well. Um, I'm kind of holding him at arm's length. He's a little bit nippy sometimes. I found these Honduran boas are kind of unpredictable. You take them out and they're really chill and calm and then suddenly they just turn and start striking. It's kind of exciting actually, the, the behavior that these guys show. Definitely different from some of the other boas. Um, a lot of you guys have asked about these and I hope to have another litter next year, but we'll just have to see. Because uh, it you know, would definitely be great to get more of these babies out there for you guys to work with so we can preserve this rare boa breed. When well, we're talking about fire bellies, I thought you, I would show you my other 2021 fire belly holdback. This is a female. And she, overall, she's pretty similar to the male, really nice and light in coloration. Uh, she has more saddles, as you can see, and she's just got this beautiful orangey glow. 
hopefully it's coming through on the camera but her, her sides are kind of glowing with this beautiful orange coloration her belly isn't quite as intense as the the male I showed you uh, but her sides are probably more intense and all these fire bellies have a little bit different of a look they don't always have this you know really uh, intense orange belly um, but you know the best examples have uh, the orange on the sides as well as on the belly but really cool project and as I said hopefully in 2024 I'll have a litter available as far as these animals they'll probably have another you know three years or so to go I have some other holdbacks that are a little bit older and they'll be entering the breeding trial sooner so hopefully these fire bellies will keep going for quite a while so we can all enjoy them in captivity one more boa for today's video. This is another 2020 holdback. This is a Kalki dwarf boa. And I held back this female just because of her appearance. She's got these kind of blocky, almost a little bit jungly looking saddles for the first two thirds of her body or so. And then she's got this cool looking stripe towards her tail. And I've seen the striping is relatively common in the Kalki boas. Typically they don't have the whole body, just you know, a few saddles are fused or striping towards the tail but it's a really cool look and you know I hope to breed selectively for it this female also has this really light almost lilac gray coloration a lot of them have this really subtle purple shades um, with the you know along with the gray I, as you can tell I'm kind of holding her away because she's a little nippy at times also and I you know I haven't handled her that uh, much but she's putting on some nice size she's probably about three feet long so she's probably got a, maybe another foot and a half or two feet to go uh, and then she'll be pretty much full size real nice example of a dwarf boa highly recommended one of my favorite types of boas and because of their small size they're more manageable so you can get the full boa constrictor experience in a smaller pint size package so I hope you guys enjoyed looking at these holdbacks from 2020 and 2021 and it gave you a pretty good idea about the future breeding trials ahead in the next you know, three or four years or so when they enter into them. With any luck, the next generation produced from these animals will be even more spectacular. And thinking about that is really what keeps me going in my breeding projects. As always, shoot me any questions or comments you might have. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching and enjoy your boas.